Hi, Taylor T. Carlson, and I'm back with another video for you. You know that I'm a rock and roll fan, and I've definitely accumulated quite a bit of vinyl over the years because I was always trying to buy records to get autographed at concerts. Of course, concerts are pretty much at a standstill right now on account of the current world situation, but I thought it would be a good time to finally buy a record player, so I had a way of playing all those vinyl releases I've gotten, plus picking up a few new ones, as well as some older used titles. As you've seen in some of my older videos, I've gotten a few vinyl hauls over the last few weeks, as there's plenty of decent shops out here in Vegas. But anyway, today I'm going to be showing off the player that I've gotten. This is the Victrola 8-in-1 music system, and this thing plays records, tapes, USB files, Bluetooth, radio, you can even use this device to record from vinyl to CDs or to your computer. It does include some software that you can use as well. So we're going to take a look at this unit. I'm going to show it off, give my opinions, the pros and cons, whether or not I do recommend this unit, and pretty much everything else in between. Before we move on, I just wanted to show a few things that came with the player, and then we'll move on to the look at the actual player itself. First of all, it actually includes a remote control, so if you're sitting across the room and you need to change songs, adjust the volume, this is kind of handy to have. Disappointingly, there's no power button on here, but again, I appreciate that they even thought of including this. Right here is the instruction manual for the player, so pretty much everything that you need to know, you'll find in here. I'm not going to go through every single page of this, but just giving you a general idea of what to expect. Inside the uh, box also you get this, they got this little welcome to our family flyer and they give you a coupon for a free gift and to save 20% on your next purchase on the official Victrola website. I went out and registered my player to get that free gift. I still have not received that even though I've ordered some other things from their site that have since arrived. So. I'm guessing that reward that they will send you for registering is free replacement needles for the record player based on what I'm seeing with the product numbers on there. And either way, if I finally do get those, I'll possibly amend this video and let you know what's up there. Got a few cables here as well. This is a USB on this side and it's got this port on this side. This is if you want to hook this up to a computer and record from your vinyl to your computer. I'm probably going to be trying that out later on because there are a few somewhat obscure vinyls that I've got or will be getting in which I don't really have any equivalent CD. And then this is just an audio cable. There's audio jacks in the back of this thing, but they're only for connecting stuff to the player. You can't connect the player to larger speakers unless you use the headphone knob, which is on the front of the unit. So that's a little awkward if you wanted to attach bigger speakers. And the unit itself, I've seen a few different variants of this. I believe this one is called the Navigator, but there's also a similar one called the Aviator. I've read that some of these come with replacement needles, USB drives, and AM FM radios. Mine did not include any extra needles. It only has an FM radio, which is honestly not a huge loss because I don't remember the last time I've listened to AM radio for anything. And then I didn't get a USB stick also, but I have provided my own that I'm going to use for the purposes of this review. The unit itself you can get in five different finishes. There's the dark brown mahogany finish, the lighter brown espresso finish, an even lighter oak finish, and then there's a black one and a white one. I actually bought the mahogany one because I thought that was the nicest looking one online based on the pictures. And also included is this CD that goes in your computer. This is the software if you want to burn stuff from your records to your computer. I like how they actually made the CD sort of look like a record. Anyway, now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the actual unit. Now, when I'm testing this out, for obvious reasons, I can only play a few seconds of each song due to obvious copyright laws. But let's get started now. Okay, we're now looking at the 
front of the unit. You can see the craftsmanship on this thing. It's a really beautiful looking unit. This uh, wood finish looks great. You got your lid here where you're gonna have the record player. Got these grooves here which give it a nice design. FM radio dial there. Got your different device formats here. Eject button for the CD player. Tuner for the radio. These are for programming track list orders and stuff like that. We're not really gonna get into that here. Volume knob here. This is actually a digital knob, not an analog knob, even though it kind of looks that way. Got the power switch for the unit right there. You can see that turning on now. Down here we got the actual CD slot. Navigation buttons for using the CD player or using the uh, attached USB stick. And for the different formats here, we've got an AUX button, Bluetooth, phonograph, which is the record player, CD slash USB, tape, and FM radio. So I'm going to turn this around now and show off the other sides. Okay, we are turning around to the side now. I'm going to move the camera just a little bit. There is our audio cassette player right there. Disappointingly, there's not really much in the way of features there, and you can't use the buttons on the front for that. It's just pretty much fast forward, eject, and play, and that's about it. I am glad they included the feature in some shape or form, though, because you don't really see a lot of things like this with audio cassette formatting available anymore. And we'll turn this around to the back. Like right there, of course, at the top left, you got your obligatory FCC stuff. You can see the groove at the top where the back of your 12-inch records will be sticking out. All the manufacturer's info there. Got the line-out ports there. There's where you will put your USB thing if you want to do the recording of vinyl to your computer. And this right here is the antenna for the FM radio. I'm still working on the optimal placement for that. Usually I keep my player downstairs. I brought it upstairs for this review. And we'll go ahead and turn this to the other side of the unit, the side that doesn't have the tape player on it. And this side is pretty ordinary, but again, you can see the craftsmanship on here. Very beautiful unit. I'll actually scroll down a little. You can see the grooves on the bottom there. And Speaking of the bottom, I'll turn this over so you can see what's underneath. But yeah, you can see the underside of this. And you can see your screws in there and your rubber feet so that this will stay in place pretty comfortably wherever you decide to place it ultimately. I've got mine downstairs on top of a bookshelf and it actually fits there just fine despite the relative size of the unit. Again, I wouldn't call this a portable unit by any means, but it's also not one of those huge sound systems you're going to find yourself having to use more than one person to lug around. And then back to the front of the unit here. One thing I will say about this, again, I love the design, but I think these buttons on the face honestly look a little too modern. I wish they'd gone for more of a retro motif with what's here on the front too. I mean, the uh, FM radio tuner kind of does that. I know Crossley has a similar player out to this that has more like, you know, faded gray looking buttons which fit the retro mood a little better. But anyway, why don't we go ahead and get started? We'll test out some music on this thing. Let me just scoot back. I just want to get the whole player in view. And I'm just going to do a quick unboxing of the top of this unit, which is where we have our record player. So I'm going to open this up. You open this up, this pulls out here, that falls into place, that holds it open. Got the nice uh, Victrola logo in there. Got our platter up here. We've got a 45 adapter for the older 45s that have the bigger holes. And we got our cueing lever and tone arm over here. There's a nice look at our our needle. Down here we've got where we adjust the speed, 33 and a third, 45, and 78. 
I don't own any 78 records, and I probably never will, but it's nice to at least have that option here. So we'll have to remember to adjust this when we're doing our different speeds of records on this thing. I'm going to try out a few things in here in a second. And then here's where we uh, unclamp the arm. And we'll go ahead and raise this. Okay, we've got our record player lid open. I'm turning on the power. Give that a second. We're going to select phono. And I'm going to grab a 33 and a third 12 inch LP. Here we are. I went with a clear one because I thought that would look a little nicer. And again, I can only play a few seconds of each song for copyright reasons, but let's go ahead and move our lever over and get started. Okay, and we just tested out our 33 and a third 12 inch LP. So I'm gonna put that away and we're gonna move down the list. We're gonna try out some 45s. Gonna leave the record player on, leave everything as it is. And we're gonna try three different things as far as records that run at 45 RPM go. I'm gonna start things off with a 45 here that has a regular sized hole. So we're gonna put that on there first. And first thing we gotta do, of course, is switch the speed of the player over to 45 RPM. I'm gonna move this over. Okay, and that works pretty well. So we're gonna put this one away. All right, now we're gonna try out something you don't see too terribly often these days. This is a flexi single. They used to sell these out as like promos and put them in magazines. This is very a very flimsy plastic, but nice little piece of history here. So I'm gonna give this one a shot. Audio quality might not be the best on this because of the nature of the product and its age, but let's give it a shot. Yeah, obviously that doesn't sound as good as like a traditional solid record, but again, nice piece of history there, and I'm glad I got my hands on one of these. I actually got this in the package with a 12-inch single, and I didn't even know that was in there, so it was a nice little bonus. And we're going to try out one more thing as far as the record player goes. For this one, we're going to need to put on our 45 adapter. So here's a close-up of the 45 adapter. This goes right here. Because a lot of these older 45s obviously have the bigger hole. Here's our 45. We're gonna toss this on the player. Got our adapter there, so that fits nice and well. All right, let's try this out. Not too bad sounding for a 45 year old record there. It's a 45 and it's 45 years old. I know very bad joke on my part, but we tested out what we needed to test there, so we are now going to put our 45 adapter back. I'm going to switch this back to 33 and a third for the next time I wish to, wish to listen to a record. And we push this back to close the lid. Everything appears to be in order. So I'm going to put our 45 away, and then we'll test out a few of the other formats on here. As you can see, this is a pretty diverse unit in terms of what it plays, one of the reasons I was so attracted to this unit in the first place. So, since we're right here, why don't we try out the, uh, the CD player next. Okay, I'm going to move this back just a little so you can see it a little easier, make sure we're not pushing this thing over the edge. Okay, I'm going to move this back a little. All right, our eject button for the CD player is right here. 
and showing that off so you can see the entry point there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And got our CD here, so we're gonna throw that in. Okay, we have eight tracks, total runtime of 30 minutes and nine seconds. Let play, I believe. Okay, and that sounds pretty good, so we'll eject our C. And since CD slash USB share one button, let's try the USB stick out next. I'm not totally sure how to navigate all the files that are on here. It's actually kind of a mess, but uh, let's take a look. So I use USB sticks for listening to stuff in my car, too, so we'll hit this. Button that's on USB. Got your you know, up and down scrolling buttons here. I really wish they had a bigger display with a nicer window so this would be easier to figure out, but uh, I'll just play whatever comes up. Okay, we just tried out the USB stick. Again, I'm not really sure how to navigate through here. You have to put stuff in folders. You just put the raw files in there and it organizes them automatically. Again, I'll comment on that in a later review if I figure it out. Kind of a mess with that particular thing, but great that I have the option of playing something off a USB stick, something I don't usually get with, uh, you know, every single device. And since we're right here right now, we tested out the... Uh, Record player, CD player, USB. Let's try out the FM radio. See what we can find. Hmm. You can progress, you can turns. Enjoy unrushed appointments, optional video visits, and more. Is that situation? Because sometimes the way distracted drivers are now, the light. Yes, rates are the lowest they've ever been in the history of the United States right now. Okay, not going to listen to the radio too much longer for obvious copyright reasons, but how about we try out the tape player now? Again, I'm going to have to turn the unit because the tape player is on the side. And it doesn't really work with the other controls, so let's scoot this back so you can see the tape player. Right there, and again, I'm still kind of figuring out the tape controls myself, so I don't really listen to a lot of tapes. I actually had to get one from my parents' house just for the sake of doing this video. So, here's our audio cassette tape. And then right here, we can push that in halfway to fast forward. And then we push it in all the way to eject. So we tried out most of the features on here. We just got to do one more thing, and that's the, uh, the uh, Bluetooth streaming. And I'm gonna... So to connect and sync this, I, I've got an iPhone here. I'm going to go into the uh, settings here. We're going to go to Bluetooth. And where it says Wooden Music Center, that's where we're going to want to make sure we're connected. I've got I'm pushing this button going from auxiliary to the uh, Bluetooth. You can hear our little Bluetooth sounds there, so I'm going to grab my phone. Okay, I got my phone here. We're gonna open up the uh, Sirius XM app. They just added the uh, option to listen on your phone and everything like that. So we'll just. David Crosby was asked on Twitter, do you still love Neil? Meaning Neil Young. This was just yesterday. And then, and he said, I love his music. Hmm. We're gonna flip through do channels here. Probably yes. It's not like a faucet you can turn on and off. Go for classic final over to Hair Nation. And you get an idea of how that works. And there you have it. A test of what this unit can do. 
I love the craftsmanship of the Victrola 8 in 1. There's a lot of different formats you can play here. You can pretty much play everything but 8 track tapes, so it's pretty nice to have. And I would like to have had a bigger screen for navigating USB drives. As is, I didn't really know what I was playing with what was on there. And also, like I said before, there are other units out there that are kind of in the same price range that go for an almost entirely retro look, whereas this has buttons in the front that I think are a little too modern looking. But again, I appreciate the variety this unit offers. It's pretty well priced for all the things it does. I think I paid about $130 for this when it was on sale on Amazon.com a few months. You also get your choice of you know five different colors. It seems like the, the black one is usually the fastest selling one that both Amazon and the official Victrola sites seem to be sold out of. But again, overall, I'm actually very happy with this unit. I have a way of playing my records now. I've got a way of playing pretty much any other format of music that I choose to play. Again, I wouldn't buy this thing with audiophile expectations. It's not going to have, you know, audiophile sound quality that's going to rock your world. But if you just want a nice family music center that'll play almost everything you've got, this will certainly fit the bill. What do you think of this unit? Is this something that you would like to buy or add to your personal collection or music library? Comment down below and let me know what you think. Also, let me know if you own a vinyl player of some sort and let me know what you have and what you think of it. Also remember to comment, share your thoughts, subscribe to my channel for additional content, and give this video a like if you found it helpful. I'm Taylor T. Carlson, and I will see you in my next video.